السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ ان شاء اللہ ان دس ویکس پوڈ کاسٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو بی ٹوکنگ اباؤٹ انسٹلنگ اے لو آف لرننگ ان آور چلڈرن وڈ نی بی گریٹ اف یو سو یور چلڈرن ایکچولی پیشنٹلی پرسیو لرننگ فرام دم سیلوس بیکاز اٹس سم تھنگ دیٹ دے انجوائے ڈوئنگ رادر دین سم تھنگ دیٹ دے بین ٹول ٹو ڈو اور اٹس ایکسپیکٹیڈ آف دیم That's what I discovered this week, alhamdulillah, in one of our trips that we do as part of our Cup of Parenting community groups. Let's see what happened. First of all, why is it important that we or our children love learning? It's because in, in Islam, we already know the famous hadith about the importance of seeking knowledge for every Muslim man or woman. Talabu al-ilmi faridatun ala kulli Muslim. But it's not just limited to Islamic knowledge, especially if we live in a non-Muslim country. It's really important to equip ourselves, to empower ourselves with both worldly knowledge and Islamic knowledge so that we can thrive in both and we can become a better person and it can help us in our life and when dealing with different people in different environments. Education is also an act of ibadah, an act of worship. So anytime our children are engaging in learning something, for example, whether that be hadith or duas, then we can encourage them to think of it or frame it as an act of ibadah, which is always rewardable. So what happened this week is on the weekend, we were invited to the Centre for Life here in Newcastle-upon-Tyne in the UK. For those of you who live here and are familiar with the place, it's a science centre, an educational establishment where children usually go to learn about all things science and they have different themes on. Now, because I run the Cup of Parenting group, a group aimed at Muslim mums and children and trying to get them to engage in activities that they might not otherwise do, we took them, actually we were invited by the Centre for Life very kindly. They gave our group free tickets so that we could go and take the children from our group to what's known as a Spotlight Day. Now, this is a yearly event in which they choose a specific theme. So this time it was the theme of space. And they have researchers from different universities who come up and set stalls, etc. And what happened is when we were in, we were warmly greeted. So once we went in, it was early morning on a weekend. All my group were there because they do really enjoy coming to these kind of trips. We went in and we were met by a lady who gave all the children these little passports. And what these were essentially were booklets that gave them um, stickers. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see I'm holding it up for you. So they had to go around and fill in the different activities and they were given stickers for doing so. So... What I noticed straight away was that obviously it's a specific theme and, you know, they have a lot of money to put on these activities and they do put on really good activities that really engross the children and invoke their curiosity, which is really important when you want the children to learn something. And as we went around, what really caught my attention I guess is that I took all of my children with me alhamdulillah and you know as those of you who know me know my eldest is a teenager the older well the older four are teenagers actually so they came primarily the older ones to help out with the group with the running of the group because it's quite a large group you know we're around 60 people uh, however they themselves got engrossed in doing the activities and once they went around and collected the different stickers from the different activities they were actually really enjoying the process of learning and that's what really struck me because I thought alhamdulillah that's good because they're quite older than the suggested age for the activities but it didn't stop them from engaging in the activities but what made me laugh was um, when we were sort of halfway through the day because I had my younger children with me as well I asked the older ones you know do you want to call it a day do you want to go now because you've seen quite a lot and they said absolutely not mommy because we haven't finished collecting all our stickers we haven't actually finished exploring all the exhibitions and the reason this made me thought the reason this made me happy alhamdulillah was because I thought actually if you look at them and at different points you know I was sat down with the younger ones who were enjoying some different easier activities was the fact that they were working together to solve the different problems and the different activities but they were actually enjoying the process of learning they were taking it in and they were enjoying asking questions exploring and completing the different challenges as well. I think my eldest actually went back to complete one challenge again because she wanted her name to be at the top of this leaderboard. But anyway, they were enjoying the process of learning. And 
where does that come from, you know, enjoying the process of learning? Those of you who know me for a while now know that I do a lot of parent coaching and my background is in child psychology, alhamdulillah. So I'm just always curious and interested in how different children learn and how as parents we can l- nurture their learning. And one of the things is creating a learning environment at home. So this starts from when they're quite little. So one of the things that you can do is create your home as a place of curiosity. And what does this mean? It means you can either set up like, for example, a learning corner, a mini library, or have toys that they can use. Not just I'm talking about, I'm not talking about expensive toys at all, but I'm talking about even if it's cardboard boxes or things that they can use their imagination, ask questions and use their own sort of ideas and really things that make them think in order to play with them. So not toys that they can just, you know, turn on and they're electronic or whatever. No, I'm talking about just simple little ideas. Even books are really, really good for children. And make sure that they align with their interests and you've got a range of things. Again, it absolutely doesn't have to be expensive things. Even things like a scrapbook, things that come through the post that, you know, you don't really need like magazines, etc., So that when your children, instead of playing with electronic gadgets, are bored, you can sit them down and either set them a challenge or a task. Or you would be really surprised if you asked the children to come up with something, which I often do, especially with my younger three. And they will come up with their own games, even if they've only got cardboard boxes. And that's what they've been doing this morning, in fact. So it really invokes their curiosity, but it keeps them busy for a while as well. And that's a really good thing in terms of nurturing their willingness to learn because then you're not necessarily doing the learning for them or teaching them in the traditional way but you're facilitating a learning environment for them and that should be really helpful inshallah of course whilst doing this don't forget to incorporate islamic values so you know if you're buying books for them then think about if there's islamic books that are available for you or Islamic learning materials so for example you can have the Arabic alphabet alongside the English alphabet or whichever you know country language you have you can make learning du'as an activity so we do it in our house for example before eating or before traveling but we make it fun so I'll ask them can you remember what the du'a is oh that's really amazing well done etc so just for the everyday actions There's even songs that you can teach them. There's even songs you can teach them in order to learn, for example, the steps of making wudu, you know, to make it fun and to make it engaging, but so that they ultimately value learning as something fun and they then come to appreciate and enjoy the process of learning for themselves. Also, don't forget to tailor the learning to their specific ages. So so one of the things I noticed on the trip on the weekend was Obviously, the very little three were interested in the role play section that they had upstairs, whereas the older ones were interested in more obviously visiting the different stalls and asking the scientists questions and the researchers questions and getting the answers to questions. And I always love taking the group on trips like this because sometimes I look at the reaction of the parents as well, because they might not have been to places like this, even though it's, you know, it's a local venue. They might not ever have gone there. They might not ever have thought to take their children there, but it's really nice to see that they can also see that their children are enjoying learning, you know. And there were some activities that incorporated gadgets, like it was like a computer game activity, there was an iPad activity, but there was also lots like origami, for example, which were linked to the theme, but they were nothing to do with um, electronics or they didn't use electronic gadgets, but still they had to a complete activity. So I'm not saying you can't or shouldn't use electronic gadgets at all, use them, but use them within a certain context and use them where you can be supervising your children as well inshallah once they get older you can obviously when you're thinking about incorporating islamic education in their everyday learning you can try to add things which are more age appropriate which are more for their understanding you know things like praying for example your salah when they're very little they can just observe you praying and that is the biggest lesson for them and that you don't even even have to do anything formal for them They might ask what you're doing. You can just simply reply, I'm offering salah. They might ask you why. They might ask you, they might not. And that's okay until they get a bit older. But at least it's something they've seen you do. And we always say in the masjid, you know, when parents come to us, when the children are a bit older, that it's a lot more harder when their teenagers are above that age. And that's the first interaction they're having with Islam because you've never done anything with them before that. So it might be all alien and new to them. So it's better to introduce these things 
when you're younger. And if they ask questions, I always say to parents, answer the questions. But if you don't know the answer to them, be honest. Tell children, I don't know the answer, but I'll find out for you, inshallah. And as they get older, you can also in encourage a lot of self-directed learning. So as um, a family that home educates, we do this quite a lot. And actually, we do it with our younger kids as well. So it's when you allow them to take charge of their learning. It is, it's a bit controlled in the sense that obviously you would still have to um, be responsible for what materials and toys and things that you have available. But it means that if you give them the opportunity to actually choose something that you want to choose, they're more likely to you know, be engaged in it, just like we did on the weekend when we took them there. Um, I left it up to the girls to decide which stalls they wanted to visit and in which order. So they might have gone to the creative one. They might have gone to the one that included um, a computer game. There was a jigsaw one which they completed. But if even at home when you want to, you know, foster that love of learning, let them do a bit of self-directed learning. And I would highly encourage you to find out more about that if you've not heard of the concept. It's, um, it's very interesting. So what is the role of the parent and the family? Like I've already mentioned, do lots of modeling behavior. So not just for Islamic things like praying salah, but reading books. If you want them to read books, read book yourself. Read at least, you know, a book a week. You know, even if you're really busy, just find out that find that one time where either you can go to the library with them or they can just see you physically sat down and not on your phone, but reading a book. And you'd be surprised. Maybe they would pick up a book because they've seen you reading it or share a book together. You know, um, in speech therapy, we always, when we're doing the baby groups or the toddler groups, encourage parents to um, do like joint learning with their children, where we we encourage parents to do what we call joint attention, which is when the children pick up a book, then we read it together. So, you know, you might read half the sentence and then pause, see if the child fills in the gaps, point to the pictures together. Um, even if it's a toy, you know, if they've picked it up, then go over to them. Don't choose something for them and in a similar way you can have family activities like Quran circles where you can sit together as a family and do some Quran recitation or Quran stories you can have trivia where you ask Islamic questions so in the community something we used to do was a quiz and curry night so what we used to do is we had the ladies and children up. We had a separate one for men as well, as well. So they used to come up, divide themselves into groups, sit on tables, have a quiz. And that was a mixture of Islamic and non-Islamic questions because we completely understood that there might have been some people coming from backgrounds that were, um, you know, didn't have the opportunity to um, absorb that Islamic knowledge. And once they did the quiz, it was really fun, really relaxed. We would give them a curry so they would have a meal afterwards. So in that way, mashallah, people were engaged and coming to the masjid, but learning something Islamic at the same time in a fun environment. Um, also making Muslim friends and spending time with people that share the same values as them. Don't forget to balance the Islamic and non-Islamic, you know, your secular education, as I've already mentioned, that's up to you as a family to decide how you want to do that. So some people enroll their children in um, the state schools or the private schools, and then in the evening, they might go to a madrasa on the weekend, or they might have separate Islamic classes. Some ch some people, you know, um, enroll their children in Islamic school, and some people just do the Islamic learning every day at home and just incorporate it into their home life. But the point is, make sure your children are balanced in both. And I'm saying this because as someone who works in the community, You'd be surprised how many children we see when they reach that adolescent age or even young adults who come to us for different Islamic matters. And they might have the best degrees in the world. They might be very highly educated white collar people, but they have no idea when it comes to deen. And actually, that's sad because it means that they don't have that sense of identity almost and sometimes they're embarrassed and you know we all, we're all always very welcoming and we can understand different people have different backgrounds but they might not know basic things or they might not know how to do basic really important islamic principles because they were never taught from childhood and the parents just focused on them going to the best schools and getting the best education so they could get the best job but negative thing was of that is that if those same parents then don't invest anything on the islamic education side those children will grow up without any Islamic values and they won't even value 
Islam actually and if and some of them go further than that um and leave Islamic values all together but that's another topic I'm just saying that make sure you balance both for your children and as parents it is our responsibility to make sure that they get that education inshallah another tip of what you can do is we live in a day and age where there are so many resources available alhamdulillah we're so lucky and there's things online you can go to the shops and get things you can get free things from the library but there's so many resources available at our disposal so we don't really have an excuse when it comes to that so there's so many apps out there there's so many books out there there's entire platforms that have been made online so have a look around and do what suits you and i would say go somewhere where there's other people that's the best way you can learn is by interacting and speaking to real life people so if you can make a little community group whether that's on the weekend or evenings whatever suits you so that you can meet with other people and your children can have that opportunity to engage in their learning and like i said it's all about making the children love their learning which is what i witnessed on the weekend and it was not just with my own children it was with other children in our group and it really made me happy and i pray inshallah that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to guide all of our children and they continue to seek knowledge in of the deen and the dunya wherever they are and they grow up to be good pious people inshallah if you enjoyed this video why not click on my next podcast which is entitled seeking knowledge inshallah i'll see you next time assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh